I define community as a space in which you experience belonging. If everyone thought of their spaces through the lens of dose, dose is your four happy neurochemicals, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. How does color impact your joy? How does music impact your joy? How can we actually support our, our joy in your chemistry to really help people belong? Hello, welcome to Touring the Most. I'm your host, Jordan Hurt. I explore the most unique homes and the stories of the owners behind them. Today we're meeting with Rada and Eli, co-founders of Daybreaker, the wellness movement that holds early morning sober dance parties around the world. Along with writing her book, Belong, Rada speaks and consults all around the globe on how to create meaningful communities. MTV named her one of eight women to change the world. We're lucky to take a look inside her home where we'll learn how she cultivates her own community, not only with friends and family, but with the breathtaking nature that surrounds the land. Let's go meet Radha and Eli. Hi, Hello. how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. So nice to meet you as well. I'm Eli. Hi Eli, I'm Jordan. Mm, nice to meet you. That was such a warm, <laughs> inviting welcome. Is that what it's like to come to a Daybreaker event? It sure is. We have a hugging committee that greets you at the door. We've oh. replaced all bouncers with huggers. Good. <laughs> Who needs those bouncers? Those mean exactly. big guys anyway. So warm and inviting. I love it. Just Thank like you. this space, right? Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah. So everything you see, the concept of it is biophilia, which is sort of love of Earth, bio, planet, philia, love. So the whole idea is it's a biophilic home. So you have the stone that's indigenous of the property. We have fish in the pond, just like we have fish outside. So you're gonna meet the former owners in just a little bit, who actually created this banister with their own two hands. We have taken what they started and we continue to update it and, and bring it even more into sort of the modern modern days. Okay. Some of the art that you'll see in the home, um, they're all female artists. We are very much feminists here in this home. Our, our artist, Bar Ben Bakil, painted this. She's an Israeli painter that we collect. Well, it's already such a labor of love, but I'm so excited to see more. Well, shall we? All right, so this is the cloud room. Wow, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, okay, first of all, like <laughs> these cascading windows overlooking the mountain range. The inspiration for the cloud room was sort of to be floating in the clouds as you look over the mountain range and all the beautiful trees, so that it really felt like, again, you're a part of the ecosystem. And the idea of sort of creating this sort of circular arrangement where you have different levels, you have the couches, you have the low seated area here, and the couch kind of inspires a more intimate sharing and connected space. You know, we built it around conversation and music so that we go as deep as possible here. And honestly, if you sat on these lazy boys, don't snooze on okay. these lazy boys are the most okay. comfortable couches I have ever <laughs> sat on. So if you want to just take a seat. I mean, it is just... Oh, wow. Yeah, but really, but, but really, really you know, just... Like... Oh my god. You know what I mean? Eli sleeps here all the time. I yeah. would too, Eli. <laughs> and one, one fun note is these pelts that you're laying on are actually from lamb that we raised here on the farm. Oh, of course. Yeah. Right. So we ended up raising 42 animals on the farm as well. It's a homestead. Okay. Eli literally led the whole farming experience of raising sheep and pigs and chickens and geese. <laughs> This is actually my grandfather's piano. It's an old antique player piano. Rada could play something or we could listen to something on the piano. Listen? Yes, it's a player piano, so it plays music automatically. Okay, let's hear it. Let her rip. Right? Isn't it cute? Yes! You know? And so the whole winter time we have gatherings, we just, just, we just have little dance parties and it's real music. It really feels, it really feels good. Eli actually does most of the cooking in the house. I get the gift of being able to eat his food. Do you, Eli? <laughs> what do you cook in here? Well, my favorite thing to cook is the, the animals that we've, that we've raised here. It always feels more sacred. You go for it, you know? 
beautiful countertops, beautiful woodwork throughout. And as you can see, it's a V-shaped kitchen, which is actually quite rare. So I just love the way that they've organized the gathering spaces. You oftentimes when you're hanging out with your friends, you often end up in the kitchen anyways. So it's nice when it's connected to everything else in this yep. way. The kitchen is where all the fun people are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's the whole idea. And again, <laughs> the ceiling really feels like you're in Mother Earth's rib cage. When we first came to the house, it really made us even more connected to the space and to one another when we're in here. I feel like I'm inside of a womb. Right? Yes. Which is the safest place exactly. you've ever been. Yes. Right, right. right. There's a softness to the texture, but when you touch it, it's rough. It's polyurethane. Right? When we throw parties here for our friends, we actually do a ton of uplighting with different colored lights. It really feels like you're in sort of an underground club. Ooh, very Berlin. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, very you got Berlin. it. You got yes, it. Yes, I know. I yeah. know. I've been there. <laughs>We believe that lighting is deeply connected to a sense of belonging. So every single light in the home is connected to a dimmer above the dining table. It gives it a soft sort of sheen so that the food looks beautiful, that the shades around the face look sort of prettier. So the whole idea is like all of our lighting is also sort of this yellow amber lighting so that really feels like you're getting this like beautiful sunlight mm. that again lends itself this inside outside sort of transcendentalist feeling, like the Frank Lloyd Wright vibes. I'm half Japanese, so um, there's a beautiful practice called Shinrin Yoku, which is Japanese forest bathing, which is all about sort of quietly moving into nature with aimlessly without anywhere to go. So this whole idea is to be under a canopy of trees and to really just sort of cross your legs and, and take a moment to find presence and just, just take a breath, you know? So let's, maybe you can do that together. Three beautiful breaths. And again, like the spaces like this really lend itself to deep present connection again to nature um, and the ecosystem under, again, a canopy of nature. And this is our family room Ooh. where we watch all the movies. And I, I know, we just sort of like plop down together, just like, <sighs> just like this. Just like that. <laughs> The whole idea is having an oversized couch that you really can just really cozy up, blankets, family, Everyone's my three-year-old daughter, couch. yeah, Nanu, our puppy, he loves it here as of well. Course. And we have 15 friends pile in here watching all the movies. Cuddle in. Yeah, our sleepovers as well. You know, my design builder that I worked with on this space, we took it down to the studs. He's one of the most brilliant builders, truly um, a creative genius. Hi, I'm Jordan. Nice, so nice to, meet to meet you. It's a pleasure. I'm the designer builder of this place. Before we starting, it was very hard because it's already unique masterpiece place. Each inch of this house was discussed, what we can add, what we don't need to add. It. So look, <laughs> we did it. That is recycled cardboard that's turned into a lamp. Um, so again, these are all found recycled materials. When I just approached Anwar, I'm like, I want this really cool sort of terracotta, Venetian clay look that feels like you're in a grotto. He totally was like, I've never done that before. And he was just an absolute F yes to every single request and weird demand that I had. The FYF, yes, right? Yes, it's in my book, Belong, yeah. Exactly. We talk about FYF, which is like F, yeah, friends. like. Fuck yeah, friends, right. you can bleep that out. You're an F yes to life, F yes to trying new things, F yes to sort of living life out loud. Right. And Anwar is one of those people. I think Anwar's greatest masterpiece is actually the bathroom. I love a good bathroom. I love a good big bathtub. This is sort of the central piece of the whole space. Um, and again, it's facing eastward, which is where the sun rises. Okay. So when my daughter and I take baths early in the morning, I get to sort of have that beautiful sunlight into the bathroom. Um, Anwar, of course, added heated floors throughout the whole house. And he and I um, had this concept of creating a chandelier. I had this idea of wanting to have a bubble light above the bubble bath. And of course, Anwar executed it flawlessly. Anwar 
and I also designed these light bulbs and we made them. We spray painted these black and these are found wood from outside as well. And also uh, the live edge counter. Uh, I love this. With I kind love of, that. With yeah. kind of like our like dungeon like chains uh, yeah, holding it up. <laughs> and probably my favorite part of the bathroom is actually our bidet over here. Our little the tushy bidet yeah. over here. All of our wallpaper, again, is non-toxic wallpaper. This is imported from Portugal. I found this wallpaper person on Pinterest, and she said, wait a minute, did you write this book about belonging? And it was just like a wonderful, again, moment of like bringing, connection yeah, community. connection community, it's yeah. what you're about. Exactly. Mommy. Okay, welcome to Soleil's room. Okay, Soleil, can you show us your slide? I want this thing and roll in my slide. Oh. Whoa! Yeah. Is that fun? Yeah. This is Soleil's fantasy wonderland room. As you can see, there's a gradient wall on the left. It's all about play and bright colors. Wants to be sort of her place that she can grow into. So we have more bold elements, less kid-like elements. It's got a trundle bed so she can have up to three friends sleeping over. And of course, this wall for her to paint on, which we paint on almost every day. What are you drawing, Soleil? A monster. I'm, I'm drawing with some eyes. We have the lasers on the ceilings. Yeah, like um, a galaxy yeah. type of atmosphere. Hey Soleil, do you want to show us your bathroom? <gasps> the rainbow bathroom? My rainbow bathroom, yes! Be quiet. Okay, shh. Okay, let's go see the bathroom. <gasps> There's some mushrooms, flowers, and a man, and a toilet. And what's on the ceiling, Soleil? Birds, orange and blue, and one that's white purple light over here. Yay! Wow. Welcome to our guest house, Jordan. Thank you. I want to introduce you to my amazing interior designer, Connie De Silva. Hi. Connie, nice it's a you. pleasure to meet you. So we've got the dream team here. Yeah, this yes. is it. Right? This is the dream team. So Anwar is my design builder, Connie is my interior designer, I'm the creative director. And one of the creative direction that I gave was biophilic fantasy. Biophilia, bio and nature philia loves fantasy. So you'll see like you know, gold giraffes. Our disco mushroom balls. Disco yeah. mushroom balls, exactly. Yes. One thing about Connie that makes her one of the most unique and epic interior designers is that she's not just a designer that picks things, but she's also an artist. She did the tiling up there and also the murals. Sewed every mud cloth in all the tapestries. All the materials, everything that we chose is sustainable. A lot of upcycled cottons and good dyes. Thinking about how are we consuming and using these things within the space and how do they support us in what I know is very important to you is like a clean, pure lifestyle. So now we're up in the nest. When we were walking through, they had the idea to name these different spaces. And this is kind of a perch with the window and it just felt nest-like. So really? I ran with that idea and started with the grass. Like this mosaic just came straight from my head. I didn't even draw it out beforehand. I just got the materials and went for it. <laughs> I've never done a mosaic before either. So this was really wild and fun for me. There's a lot of firsts for everything <laughs> yeah. in this project, but it all worked beautifully. Yeah. By the time I was done, we truly had this perfect little larger than life nest over here. I would love to sleep up here. You oh, know, this like... is everybody's favorite spot. This is our party room. As you can see, it's a game room, so we play ping pong here. I'm Asian. Again, I love ping pong. Okay. I just Are you good, though? I, I, you know, I'm kind of undefeated in my friend group. I mean, I was born with a paddle in my hand. Oh, okay. Um, right. So we play a lot of ping pong. Um, this is also where we do a lot of work. So we do a lot of offsites here for my Daybreaker team. Anwar made this incredible kitchen by hand from scratch. It's like around one month. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just a little small. A little small. Project. Yeah. <laughs> we have this gorgeous, vibrant mural. Yes. My first mural. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. I'm another sensing thing for... a reoccurring thing yes. here. She found a wallpaper that she really liked, but we just couldn't find it in the materials. I was like, you know what? Let me just try painting it. Luckily, she trusted me enough to do it, and it came out great. <laughs> and I'm so happy. So gorgeous. <laughs> yes. And then it carries on up. 
to the ceiling, you have this almost like sunset over here. My favorite part is that from the nest where we just were, you can see that and it just kind of creates this that. beautiful sunlight That's throughout the whole incredible. space. incredible. When we have dance parties, we remove all the stuff and turns into a giant dance floor, light up the ceilings, we have a DJ booth, or we have go-go dancers on the platforms. We have, you know, all kinds of different sort of theatrical moments on either side. Uh, for you need to invite me to one of your parties. 100%. We've got go-go go go up here, yeah. we've got, okay. Sounds like a great time. Yeah. Speaking about these dance parties here, like tell me a bit more about Daybreaker. Daybreaker is a global morning dance party. We sort of wake up in 31 cities around the world at sunrise and we dance in iconic locations. So imagine waking up and dancing at the top of the World Trade Center or dancing at the Sydney Opera House or dancing at the White House or dancing at the Museum of Natural History to throw dance parties without alcohol, without substances, to really start our day with energy, joy, intention, community, belonging, and it just took off like wildfire. It's really it's a 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. You kind of have to know, we don't do any marketing and advertising, you have to sort of be whisper shared for everyone watching. Um, now you know, now you know. But when you actually go and do it and peel yourself out of bed, even if it feels like a terrible, like, I'm not going, why am I doing this? Once you get there, it is like euphoria and you just walk away just feeling like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And your heart is just burst open. This is so exciting, Jordan. I'm so excited to introduce you to the two magical humans who've become dear friends of ours as well, Linda and Andy Weintraub, who created this magical place where when we walked in, literally tears are streaming down my face. Oh my gosh, this is our new house they just built with their own two hands again in their 80s. Hey, so there he is. Can you believe oh, it? So much. So when we <laughs> Hello you there, Jordan. sir. I'm tell Jordan. Oh, uh, did we get you out of bed? I <laughs> know. My fancy pajamas here. <laughs> when they agreed to give us the house, we finally passed the torch. We veritably lit a torch and passed it right from right. Andy to Linda to me yeah. to Eli, and Eli lit a fire, and it was just like incredible <laughs> moment. I've told that story a million times <laughs> as well, I, I, of just I, like the I most conscious. <laughs> Okay, so, um... See these stones? Yes. Everyone I made. Wow. Ta-da! <laughs> and so, um, what is this? Oh, this is our barrel sauna. That was not here. Okay. Yeah, we <laughs> built that, I know, after. This is definitely a yeah. new addition. <laughs> so we do sunset saunas, which so is really cool. special. Yes. I hope we can... You, you can enjoy it sometime. <laughs> you gotta get the heck out of yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Eli's been shooting arrows. I can oh, the view is spectacular. Linda found an arrow. What's that? Linda found an arrow. Oh my. We lost, we couldn't find Wait, it. I set up a, uh, I set up an archery range down the hill here. So <laughs> we've been, I've been training. So watch, that one. what you doing? You're doing bow and arrow work now, yeah? What they have done and the magic that they've created on this land is truly one of a kind. And I'm just so excited to hear uh, some of the history of this place. It has been a pleasure to be here and experience this beautiful property today. So here we are in the amphitheater. Can you tell me a little bit about this? The original owner had used this as a gravel pit, and so it was this unsightly hole. And of course we said, is there some way to take advantage of the fact that we've got an unsightly hole? We had always, throughout our marriage, hosted events, and so it became the amphitheater. We not only had the stone of the earth that you sat upon and became connected to, but we had fire, and we dug a trench from the creek, and so we brought the element of water here, too. You gathered with the forces of the whole planet, wow. and it was very special. We've continued the tradition. We've since had Matthew Morrison, who's a star of the show Glee, perform here. We've had Elu, a pianist, perform here. We've had the lead singer of Walk the Moon. Even Shabari rope tying experience with someone tying this beautiful woman up in rope, uh, led by a harpist. So we've just had all kinds of performance theater here. How did you stumble across this 
beautiful piece of property with that amazing view of the mountain range. Linda would go out and search. She had a real estate agent. He brought her over here one day. She came home in heaven. Wow. <laughs> you know how it is when you fall in love, you are enthralled. We had just bought the land. We couldn't afford it, but we just couldn't live without it either. I was on the phone talking to an artist and I told him we had just bought this beautiful piece of land. And he said, well, tell me about it. So I described the rolling meadow and the distant view and the sun sets over the mountains and the creek. And I remember ending up saying with great exuberance, it's so beautiful. What I got at the other end of the phone was silence, nothing. And it went on and on. And I remember my tension rising saying, what is he going to say now? And so he said in response to my words, it's so beautiful, three words that changed my life and his words were, is that all? I hung up the phone and for the next 22 years, <laughs> I have been considering what can land be that is more than beautiful. I'm an artist, I have studied art, I've been happy with the visual experiences, but he made me go on a pursuit that went so far beyond admiring something from a distance to engaging with it and seeing it as an integral part of everyday life. We began noticing stone everywhere. How can that be an asset? And we have beautiful cedar trees here. Those trees became a resource and we did a lot of weaving of fencing. And gradually it occurred to me, I should begin thinking about not only what I can take from the land, but what I can give to the land. Permaculture is all about seeing relationships, not objects. And then of course, the exciting part was, how do you integrate human? into that reciprocity. We took form from the outside. When you look at the line that divides the living room from the staircase, you see a long tree limb, and that determined exactly what shape that would be, and then we framed up underneath that. Can you tell me a bit about the facade? This goes back to an earlier statement. We couldn't afford it, but we bought it anyway steel buildings were much less expensive to put up, especially an arch building. Once you put the arch up, you've got your building. The arch supports itself. So Linda went to the library and started looking at manuals. Somehow she came across steel master buildings. No posts, no beams, just a shell. And the shape, my goodness, it just looks like it grew out of the earth. We had never <laughs> seen anybody use a building like this for domestic purposes and all the people who are knowledgeable about building advised us against doing this because this is unprecedented this is going to be <laughs> awfully expensive and i guess you realize we didn't listen to their advice and here we are so i just wanted to share a message from rada's book about belonging as with everything in life Nothing stays the same. All communities and relationships evolve and change. When you sense it happening, rather than thinking, this isn't what it used to be, consider this. It's never supposed to be what it used to be. Everything evolves, including communities and relationships, and it's a beautiful thing. Let's learn to embrace it. <laughs> we have passed on something that was so dear to us for several decades and we feel good about it and we see it thriving in its own way and it's very satisfying to see that what we gave you was a framework and an armature for you to build your vision in your life. Passing it on can be okay <laughs> and rather than a sorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, okay. My hands are cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get me on three. One, Let's two, go three. three. One, two. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Woo!